Ever wonder why a four-leaf clover is considered lucky? Or what exactly luck of the Irish is, and why are the Irish associated with luck? And are leprechauns supposed to be good spirits or bad spirits? For the month of March, I'll be looking at the stories behind common superstitions and symbols of luck. And considering this episode is hitting right around St. Patrick's Day, I thought it would be fun to touch on the superstitions surrounding the Irish culture. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind the luck of the Irish. But first, a quick message. If you're listening to this, you know how awesome you are for listening to podcasts, right? You get to be that friend who starts sentences with, hey, I heard on a podcast. One out of five people listen to podcasts every month. That means while you're the cool one, four of your friends, well, aren't as cool as you. But you have the power to help them. Be a good friend and suggest a podcast. For the month of March, hundreds of podcasts from NPR, StuffYouShouldKnow.com, and indie podcasts alike are putting out a challenge to listeners to introduce their friends to podcasts. And as much as I'd love it if you recommended the story behind, it might not be up everyone's alley. But there are plenty of shows to choose from. Whatever you decide to suggest to your friends, tweet about it using the hashtag tripod. That's T-R-Y-P-O-D, as in try a podcast. I'll be using the hashtag all month to talk about some of my favorites as well. Druids living more than 2,000 years ago in Northern Europe believed in a number of sacred plants and flowers. Among those were mistletoe, which is where the Christmas tradition of kissing underneath it comes from, oak trees, and clovers. Clover is said to be lucky as they provided grazing food for cows. And when St. Patrick began teaching Christianity, he used the three petals as a metaphor to represent the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost all as one. Even though we didn't talk about it in the Lucky Numbers episode, the number four is also associated with good luck because of the four points on a compass, the four major elements, the four seasons, the four tops. Oh wait, no, the last one was a band, but I guess they were lucky for helping introduce Motown. Combining the luck of the clover with the luck of the number four made four-leaf clovers an extremely good luck symbol in Ireland and around the world. There's also the legend of when Adam and Eve were being led out of the Garden of Eden, Eve grabbed a four-leaf clover on her way out as a souvenir. Considering there's a 1 in 10,000 chance of finding a four-leaf clover, it's no wonder scientists have tried to modify the genes of clovers to make these rare plants easier to obtain. In Japan, the Guinness World Record was given posthumously to Shikio Obera when he was able to grow a clover with 56 leaves. If you think the Irish are inherently more lucky than other nationalities, you may be surprised to find out that luck of the Irish is actually more of a sarcastic expression. The phrase originated in the United States and became popular during the 19th century gold and silver rush, when some of the most successful miners were of Irish or Irish-American heritage. And the phrase was actually used as a backhanded compliment, meaning the Irish found their riches through luck and not through intelligence or smart. But when you look at the history of the Irish, it's not so lucky. Like many immigrants to the United States, many settlers had to leave their families back home, and when they were leaving, the farewell parties were more like funeral wakes since they were most likely never going to see them again. When those who made it without falling ill came to America, the UK, or Australia, they were faced with discrimination. In London, boarding houses had signs and windows that would read, No Blacks, No Dogs, No Irish and job descriptions would include, no Irish need apply. When you think of a leprechaun, who's the first you think of? Most likely Lucky the Leprechaun from the Lucky Charm cereal, right? Well, he's probably one of the nicest versions of a leprechaun out there. In fact, he was almost replaced in the 70s by Waldo the Wizard, who was more popular in New England as a mascot for Lucky Charms until General Mills softened the miserly lucky to make him appeal to children all over the U.S. On the other side of that character would be Warwick Davis' character from the Leprechaun horror movie franchise. Well, unless you count the fifth movie, in which he becomes a rapper at the end? Just for fun, I've linked to the rap video at the end of the movie in the show notes, 
Just so I'm not the only one who has heard Lep in the Hood. Your place in the hood. I'm the man of green. Come to do no good. Lep in the hood. Come to do no good. Lep in the hood. Come to do no good. But folklorists have associated the leprechauns of history with shoemakers and cobblers. In fact, a telltale sign a leprechaun is near is the knocking sound coming from shoemaking. And these cobblers are very protective of the money they make with their trade. If someone were so lucky to catch a leprechaun, the captor could trade the leprechaun's freedom for his pot of gold. Sometimes it's the leprechaun's amulet or lucky charm a person needs to find and can then trade for a pot of gold. And in another version, the leprechaun could grant the captor three wishes. But leprechauns are said to be tricky. In one story, a leprechaun led a man to his pot of gold buried under a tree, and having no shovel with him to dig it up, the man tied a red garter to the trunk to mark it. But when he came back with a shovel, all the trees surrounding the area had red garters tied around them. And in the case of the three wishes, there are tales of leprechauns tricking their masters into making a fourth wish, therefore canceling the first three wishes. The reason for this tricky nature was a way to warn people against get-rich-quick schemes and greed. A similar spirit, known as a clericon, is considered the surly drunken cousin of the hard-working leprechaun. Clericons are known for spoiling wine, imbibing in spirits, and tormenting drunkards. While the idea of leprechauns warn against greed, clericons serve as a warning against the dangers of overindulgence in alcohol. Farmers in Ireland were even said to offer whiskey to the leprechauns and clericons as a way to ensure they wouldn't go messing with their crops. Information for this episode was sourced from HowStuffWorks.com, LiveScience.com, Mental Floss, and more links which can be found in the show notes at TheStoryBehindPodcast.com. Follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at StoryBehindPod or subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.